How are we doing guys? It's a glorious Wednesday here in Yorkshire. Well, not so much, it's raining and a bit miserable. It's not cold, it's like 10 degrees, but it's still raining. To say that like, you know, we've had some pretty good weathers last week. And I trust you guys have had a good week. And my last video was last Wednesday. Um, and I took a week off because, um, you know, I have my daughter it's just a little bit difficult to do any filming and really it gives me a chance to build up topics on what to talk about so just had a, a drop my daughter off at nursery and had a quick charge and now I'm heading home to crack on with some work it's been quite an interesting week um, and uh, yeah I'm trying to get get back into my uh, my work routine without my little girl around I do have to tidy up the flat though. One thing I did do this week, this last week, was I registered to vote. Um, I changed my sort of electoral address to the new, to the flat. Um, which is kind of a bit late really, because I might be changing it to somewhere else soon, so, but nevertheless. And it got me thinking, I needed to uh, sort of brush up on this whole EU referendum thing. And the Brexit campaign or the Remain or whatever stupid little pet names people have given it. And I needed to understand, and, and bearing in mind, I have voted in the past and I've been very disenfranchised um, by how corrupt the system is. And, and, and corrupt is obviously a strong word. However, the more you dig, the more scandalous things you find, and, it, and it's and it's a multitude of layers. It's a multitude of of things that are not right, and it's hard running a country. I, I you know, it's it's not easy, um, and you have to do little side deals and just the way things work out. And you know, even in business, you even in business you have. A multitude of layers you've got directors of one company that benefits from another company and so and so is a friend of so and so and you get a deal that way and you know and it's happening to me you know I'm a friend of so and so and he only gives me um, he only gives me work because he's my mate um, where he could easily go and get it tended somewhere else and you know they may be they may be cheaper but the quality won't be good and he can't be trusted so you know, it's, it swings and roundabouts. Some you win, some you lose. However, when it comes to a country, you're not just running it for the economy. You're running it for the people that are domicile within that country. And, hold on, there's a speed camera. I need to slow down a little bit. My speed limiter on. Where was I? Yeah, people forget that government are put into place to act on our behalf. And what this current government seems to have done is completely ignore the people and do whatever's needed for the government and do whatever's needed for the big business. And, you know, fair enough, big business. They employ a lot of people, they pay a lot of people's wages, they have a lot of responsibility. But they also have a responsibility to the country as a whole. It needs to be run, there needs to be a set of rules, you know, that are in place for everybody, that are equal. But that's not the point, that's not the whole deal with this whole EU thing. I've been trying to put the, the whole EU debate into some kind of narrative that I can relate to and that I can understand. Okay, this is how I, this is how I see it. Let me just move this down. Imagine for a moment that you have a housing estate and it is comprised of many different types of houses. Some that are different from others, some that are buggered, some are bigger, you know, potentially eat different things like sauerkraut or bratwurst, drink beer. Some have nice houses and there's a pub up there. And then there's this house over here. All these ha I need a proper pointy thing. Can I use this ruler? No, I'll use Elsa. Right, 
Come on, Elsa, get in a shot. There we go. Right. So these houses here are all sort of clumped together, and you know, they've they've been neighbours for you know for as long as the the earth's been around, and this one here is a little bit out in the countryside. It's a bit of a drive, you know, to get there it's, you know, a proper mission. And a long time ago, all these houses, all the owners of these houses were at war because they wanted their land or they wanted to, you know, just dictate over, just stick these down, uh, dictate over and, and you know, they wanted a nice little holiday home out in the countryside, or whatever. Whatever, right? So, um, after some, like, major battles, they all got together in the pub. And had a chat and said, look, we can't keep fighting all the time. We need some harmony and some prosperity and, you know, we're all in this together. We're all, you know, part of the same thing. So, what they did was they set up a cooperative. They sat down in the pub and they went, well, you know, so-and-so over here is a good plumber and so-and-so over there likes, you know, can mow grass and so-and-so over there can fix your IT problems and so-and-so over here, you know, they're good with money, I think, and, you know, so-and-so over here is a builder, although his house is a little bit buggered and knackered. Um, and, you know, so-and-so over here are good at laying tarmac and such, right? And so over here are uh, 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 good with, you know, satellite dishes. Ah, oh, no, satellite dishes. That's a satellite dish, not a dog on the roof of that. And that's made from mud. So they sat down in the pub and they went, right, fair enough. So what we'll do is we will share our trade between us all to make sure that we're all okay. Bearing in mind that they all own their own houses. So as time went on, and the owners of these houses got old and sort of the owner of these houses got old and moved on and the the families sort of continued going to the pub and having meetings and stuff and then eventually the landlord of the pub um thought well i could why don't we all chip in together and we'll we'll you know We'll chip in all the money and we'll buy all these houses and we'll put them all together in one. And then what we'll do is, um, if you guys ever move out, you could just rent those houses out to whoever moves in and we all share in the profits from the pub. We're going to meet there anyway because we're, you know, addicted to alcohol or power. One of the, I don't know, I forget. So... This country, this house here, is sort of left out in the countryside. All these people still want what's here because they've got lots of sort of things that they, they could sort of give to this cooperative. And this guy here, he works in the city. He doesn't really, you know, go to the pub very often. Um, but he really wants to fit in. He really, really wants to fit in. So basically what happens is he goes, right, well, I'll sell trade to you and, you know, I'll, you know, come to the pub every now and again, we'll do the meetings or whatever. So after time goes on, time goes on, time goes on, people have moved in, moved out, moved in, moved out. But the original owners of this house still, it stays within the family. These people have moved on, changed hands or whatever, and all the rent's going to the pub and the conglomerate's working really well. However, one particular country, they have a set, one particular house, sorry, they have a particular tenant that's trashed the place. They've not paid their rent, they've, you know, put loads of debts against the house or whatever. And they've gone to the pub in the meeting and they've said, um, I need some cash, um, otherwise, you know, we're going to go bankrupt. So they all club together reluctantly and bail him out over there and everyone is happy. The only people that aren't happy are these people here. But the owners of this house, not the people renting it, the owners of that house go, no, it's for the greater good. 
But it turns out that the owners of this house still have a stake personally in the conglomerate up in the pub. And the money that's lent from, say, I don't know, this house, who have all the money, the people are all still on the, they're on the board. They're all in it together, personally, not for the people that live in the house, but the actual owners and the landlords of the house. So they say, well, it's going to get, it's getting a bit crazy. Let's, um, let's get somebody else in. So what they do is they decide that they're going to let the cook of the pub be in charge of the whole thing. Nobody, none of the tenants in any of their houses anywhere have a choice in who they choose to run the pub and to run the conglomerate. So the people of this house out in the countryside decide we don't want to be told who to deal with in this country, in this sort of the main village part where everyone's clumped together. Um, and we don't like the fact that people in the pub that we don't even know and we couldn't even name making decisions about who cuts our lawn, who fixes our plumbing, who fixes our roof and who sorts out all our IT we'd like to choose because there's a whole other city over there that has better skills, more competitive, and generally they're a little bit friendlier. More time has passed and the people of this house want to leave. They don't want to be part of this conglomerate anymore. They'd like to make decisions based on their own interests, their own needs to do with their culture and they want to, you know, they want to do deals with the rest of the cities over there and over there and up here and, and, and down there. Right? But these people don't want it. And the people that own the house that are benefiting from this house being part of this conglomerate are not happy and they still they're telling the residents of here all sorts of lies or propaganda and not telling the whole truth. Bearing in mind, a lot of the rent that this house pays to the conglomerate never comes back. And some of the poorer ones in this conglomerate over here, say, are benefiting massively, which is not a bad thing. I'm all, we're, all for, we're all for like prosperity and growth. Now, if the people of this house leave the group, the group, they're not completely left on their own. As they are still paying their council tax and they still are protected under the NATO treaty and they're still protected by the UN, the United Nations, which is, you know, there to protect everybody. So they're not completely on their own. So essentially what we're saying is this house wants to buy the rights back and get away from this bunch but not necessarily say bye bye they just want to do things on their own you know do things their own way and that surely surely can't be a bad thing it's an easy choice I know some of you Puritans out there would actually balk at this video, but yeah, it's a little bit of fun and that's how I've rationalised it all. So, um, and uh, those dolls are my daughters, so not mine. I'm, I'm not a doll sort of like person. They're just lying around all over the place. So, uh, have a good day and um, stay safe and don't forget to love each other. Back in your cage.